two weeks, so they're good. good. That's okay, I'll call the, uh, the commission's so meeting for September 30th, 2015. Yes. Yeah. Uh, just a uh, wet one. First item is yeah. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Had a chance to read the minutes. I'll make a motion that we accept the, uh, the minutes of September 23rd. I don't have any corrections. Second. Any, second. any further discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all um, those in favor say aye. 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 And so voted. Wendy, you want to want to come up? Sure. One more piece of paperwork on the timber sale. Um, just need to get your signature on the uh, wetlands permit. Okay. And uh, it's we, there's a intermittent stream that comes down through the area that we'll be harvesting. Uh, we have a couple of existing crossings there. May need to put in a couple of others. And so this is just uh, make sure that we're doing everything <coughs> right. And, okay. Um, so under, if you can sign it, owner and and date that. Okay. This is acceptable for the board that I sign this? Yep. Yes. Um, 9.30. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Wendy, I've been in contact with... Uh, my guy by the name of, I think it's Norm Holiday. Okay. From the Ossipi Rotary Club. He has the map. Great, okay. Okay. Um, I don't know if he brought it up Monday or not at their meeting, but it looks like, uh, and I'm hoping that the Ossipi Rotary Club is going to take over that bicycle path. Okay. And do whatever organization. We walk the trail. Great. Um, the last part of it, though, where it comes out by the tank, um, I asked Will last week if he would flag it again because I think the where it comes out, it comes out further down from the tank. The gully isn't quite as, as big there. As yes, you know yeah, it, it, it actually follows an old woods road um, out behind mm -hmm. the nursing home. It, it doesn't come out near the tank, but right. um, yeah, that's mm -hmm. something that... Um, uh, we can flag and, and mow. I also had um, gotten some marking paint to mark the trail. Okay, he was um, going to flag it, but yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I had hoped when we had the summer intern to have him mm -hmm. do that, but we ran, ran out of time. Yeah. So I do have yellow paint to, to sort of paint onto the trees and, and okay. mark that out so it'll be easier to follow. Um, now, we have... Um, materials to do a couple of wetlands crossings there. Did they intend to use those materials or? Um, um, there's some split telephone poles out there. Right. Yeah, and um, I was going to get some planking to um, mm -hmm. use over those to get across two right. wetland areas. Okay. And, um, I'm not sure they, like I say, he wasn't going to bring it up now this past Monday, the Monday before, they had other items on their agenda. Um, but he was kind of excited about it. Great. Uh, so, and he's a go-getter, so I think they'll, they'll do something. Go ahead. Uh, are you talking about the Rotary Club? Yes. Um, I, was, I was there Monday and they didn't discuss it while I was there. Okay. Okay. We might have taken it up. I didn't stay for the whole meeting. The young lady from Russia that works in the nursing home oh, yeah. came and talked to oh, Alex. Yeah. And it was really interesting. And, uh, I stayed a little bit after that and then I left. So yeah. they didn't discuss it while I was there. Sometimes they uh, they have a board meeting before. No, they didn't have a board meeting before. They didn't have a board meeting? Yeah. Okay. All right, then they, maybe they haven't brought it up. My understanding from Kathy Gary is that we have little over $3,000 left in an account 
mm -hmm. um, to go towards that. Um, I would also suggest that um, if possible, if we could swap some loam for some gravel um, with, I think it's Dow or Downing or whatever the company is right across the street just below Dunkin' Donuts. There's a gravel pit in there. I know we get our, our, our sand for... Dow. Dow, okay. Um, uh, for our sanding of the roads and so forth from them. Um, and I'm wondering whether we could swap loam, which we've got plenty of, uh, in that huge pile back there. Okay. Um, for some gravel to, uh, or whatever else we need for that path. Um, and I told them it would be nice if we could get it done by next fall. Yeah. Or at least walkable. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, so that, I guess that's where that stands right now. If they haven't brought it up, they didn't bring it up when they, uh, they'll be brought up later on. Okay. But it was right. just a case of the end of the trail wasn't quite defined. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then I noticed that uh, um, someone put that 20 by 20 sheet of black plastic. This black out plastic there. out there. Yeah. yeah, the intent with that is to uh, seed that this fall into a mix of pollinator plants. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, we've got another area covered in black plastic out by the hoop house that we're also going to be oh, right. uh, doing some pollinator planting. Okay. 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 So. okay, so I told them we'd get in touch with you. Okay, um, great. So, great. We'll see where that goes. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, you very much. Anything else thanks. for us? Thanks. Nope, that's it. When do you think that logging job will take place? I, they want to do it sooner rather than later. Um, you know, if you've heard in the news, um, uh, Verso Paper up in uh, Maine is closing down a couple yeah. of their machines, and that's impacting our pine pulp markets. And the sale that we have going up on the hill is a lot of pine. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, what what will happen is um, with that market being gone, a lot of the pine pulp will be turned into chips, and then. You know, if the logging conditions are good, they'll start to flood those markets. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, pine sales, they want to get taken care of sooner rather than later. So, mm -hmm. we either need to have really dry conditions um, to get up there this fall or uh, frozen ground early this winter, I think, is what we'll see. Any estimate as to what we would derive as income? I'm guessing around $7,500, $8,000. That little. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of it is um, poor quality pine. Yeah, um, so we're really um, as well as some uh, damaged hardwood. Hopefully, we will um, get three truckloads of firewood as well. Mm -hmm. to, to the um, hardwood has jumped up in price, hasn't it? Yes. Yeah, the markets for hardwood pulp are, are good. Or, or just hard uh, log length for. I mean, I, I just got a load, and it was 1,200, nine cords for $1,200. Okay. Uh, last yeah. year, I paid 1,000. Yeah. So everybody's jumped up a couple hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> still, still good demand for that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I imagine those prices will stay, yeah. stay high. Okay. Anybody any questions about County Forest or before she leaves? If not, All thank right. you. Thanks a lot. All right, next item is public input. <clears throat> Anybody have public input? No one? Okay. Um, let's go to work session then. Um, NHAC convention approval of attendance based on agenda. Uh, I really haven't looked at the agenda. I just got it this morning. Um, but Go ahead, Ken. Uh, Mr. Chairman, there's everyone wants to go to the Association of Counties Convention, and, and you know we'd love to send everyone, but um, with the expense, I think uh, um, I'm, I'd be asking for you to give me some guidance on 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 who you think would benefit. From these, and I went over it. Um, there's a lot of HR uh, 
education sessions in here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there is uh, the Department of Corrections uh, and the nursing home. And the registry of deeds. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They have a big one this year. Um, the, the registrar uh, normally doesn't have as large uh, as large of, a, of an educational piece uh, but I noticed this year it, it, it is quite large. Mm -hmm. um, is is the affiliate getting bigger, or are they just organized? Well, yeah, get a little more organized. It's my first year, yeah. so I don't have a whole lot of history. But I do know that there are events from Sunday evening all the way through uh, Tuesday evening for um, for the registry of deeds. Yeah, it's pretty consistent too. So, based on the agenda as presented, I, I would recommend that the department heads of nursing home, jail, HR, myself, and uh, the registrar. Although, do you have it in your budget? I do. Where? Oh. What line do you do, do you know? I don't. How could I have not brought my budget? <clears throat> I have it right here, Lisa. If you could just. Mm -hmm. oh, I do have, I have it. It's. Um, this is last year's budget. Um, I believe it's. Because you have travel expense, but I don't see education. I believe that's where it is. Okay. Uh, the education part of the budget was in um, other fees and services, and that was not for this. It was for um, <clears throat> teaching, okay. technology, um, but I believe it's in the uh, travel. So uh, I spoke with the superintendent of the jail, and he would like to send uh, um, his captain up as well. Um, and he'd like to send a few officers to, uh, to on Monday, to the Priya one, um, which he thinks that, that they would get a lot out of it. Um, I'm not recommending that they stay over. Um, it is from 9.30 to 11.30. <clears throat> On Monday? Yeah. I don't see the jail. That's right there. Yeah. It's right there. Dude. DOC affiliate? DOT <coughs> right there. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <coughs> so, you know, I, I don't know where, where or who. Do we have a figure on what the daily rate would be to register? Yep. Uh, per. Per um, session is, per se I think... Uh, per session? Yeah, there's, there's a per session uh, price, and then there is a conference price. And the conference price is 175 for all the sessions. Mm -hmm. um, for a single session, I believe it's uh, either 25 or 50. Um, per session? Yeah. Not per day? No. Oh. I believe $25 per session or $50 per session. Um, you know, I, I, so right now I'm thinking Howie, um, the superintendent of the jail, went at uh, myself and um, uh, Lisa as well. Mm -hmm. What's that total going to come to, Ken? Oh, I don't know. Head, I don't know. Can we find out? Sure. But with all costs involved, travel and yep. Um, okay. May I ask a question? <coughs> yes, go ahead. Um, there were some nominations for awards. Yeah. When do we know if the awards were acted upon and if? Uh, After the thirteenth of October. What? The thirteenth or the sixteenth? I think it's the thirteenth. It, yes, it's 13th, that Tuesday. And if awards are 
present it to any county employees? Might they go to the banquet to see? They would go to just to the banquet, right? Well, I think we'd have to stay over too overnight, yeah. right? Yes, the 13th of, of October, we would know who is getting the awards. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, because that might play into the um, cost. I did nominate one of the <clears throat> registered employees. Let's uh, wait until next week. Well, I'm not going to be here next week. Um, <coughs> still wait till next week if you want to, uh, as to who's going and what we're paying towards them going. The rooms are 159 a night. And then it's a... That includes tax? Uh, we don't pay tax. Um, so it's 159 a night. Um, per room. Uh, the meals, there are, for an employee, the meals are uh, the banquet is $75, the dinner uh, on Monday night is $75, breakfast is like $31. Um, there are a couple vendors that are picking up uh, some of the uh, some of the meal costs uh, for the employee. Um, so three of the meals are, are being covered by uh, various vendors. I know they got at least 20 vendors coming. Wow. And they're trying to get more. Oh. And the vendors pick up um, quite a bit of the expense of yeah. the rooms and so yeah. on. So I'm I'm guessing the average em employee uh, for the you know for the two nights is um, around seven hundred dollars per employee for meals and for the conference. And I can tell you I'm not going. I, I think you should go one day at least. Um, I'll deal with the agenda. Why um, I One o'clock, actually one to five um, on Monday, the Commissioner's Council, Medicaid Management Care. That's, that's a, a high priority subject right now um, um, as to whether counties are going to take this over, whether they're not, whether some counties will, um, the smaller counties may not, and can afford to, there's a whole lot of stuff yeah. going on there. And it's also um, being carried over into Tuesday, um, 145 to 445, under the nursing home affiliate, uh, managed care issues and, and some updates as well. Um. Well, that's not as important as the Commissioner's Council, I don't believe, at, at least for the Commissioners. You don't plan on going at all? I hadn't. You know, I just, I, I, I'm sorry, David, I just can't justify this kind of money in the tight situation that we're in. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> You can buy a dozen eggs for three fifty. You don't need to pay thirty five dollars uh, for breakfast. I'm not saying that's crazy. That's crazy. I mean, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass them on it. And, uh, Chris, I think there's you. other places that we can pick up the information. If, you, if you're going, you can tell us what we want. Ken can tell us. Yeah, what yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just from, well, for myself, the, the decision is easy because I will be tied up with a family obligation at that time, so I won't be okay. even in the okay. state. So I definitely can't. I definitely can't go due to that. Okay. And we probably should move uh, to the meeting then for for that Wednesday. <coughs> Our yeah. meeting. Yeah. Yeah, we could do that. So we probably should move it to, uh, to the next day, Thursday, uh, the, the 5th. Okay. So Monday. Wow, we're on the 
subject. So that'd be November 5th. Is that okay with the rest of the members? Yep. We'll be back in time, Chris, for that? No. We'll be gone the whole week. Okay. Yeah, we'll be. Okay. So let me. We'll be back by Wednesday. <clears throat> Next week's meeting? Plan on meeting? Yes. Okay. So, do you still want me to get back to you on 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 the cost per day? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, give us some rough estimates. And I'm doing that per employee. So if <laughs> well, so if one employee goes, it'll be seven hundred dollars times however many go. If not, just a rough figure. Well, I and I'll remind you, you know, it's also, they, they've already put it in their budgets last year for this year. So, the money's in there. I'd like to go back to the registrar's um, budget. Um, I don't understand why conferences are under travel. Every other department is <coughs> under education and education conference, conference. not under travel. Right. I don't believe there's a line item for education and conferences. You can put one in. You can put I would one like in. to. That would be good. Mm -hmm. I'll do that for next year's budget. It is under travel. I just double check. Okay. Yeah, I kind of thought it probably was. And travel is for travel. Education and conferences? Yep. Okay. Um, so hold up until. Next week, yep. regarding um, who's going where. How about the update on meeting with USI consultant? <coughs> the um, the uh, human resources uh, director and myself met with uh, a gentleman by the name of uh, uh, Lou Ritchie. Yeah. He he's a uh, he's a I guess he's a claim broker. I guess you might call it. Um, Stratford County utilizes him um, to help them manage their health benefits, health claims, uh, uh, bidding for health insurance. Um, what he will, uh, he's going to meet with us next week, um, and he'll um, present the board with, uh, with some cost savings analysis of what he can provide for Carroll County. He's been at Stratford for about eight years now, um, and he attends the uh, uh, union meetings and um, gives uh, cost estimates of, of insurance, the savings, um, explains, answers any questions that, that the union may have or management may have. He's retired. No. He's not retired? No, no. Okay. No. Um, and uh, when I do you want to add anything? Hey, um, Where is he just, from? I think the, uh, he's from Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Oh. I think the value that he could bring is because we know that the delegation wants us to go out to bid for health insurance um, and just to see what the different um, options are out there. He could help us out with the bid process, um, but also in procuring any other um, insurances or benefits for the employees and what costs those would be and how, how he could help um, manage those costs <coughs> by by shopping around and, and finding out what's available um, but he's very knowledgeable in um, the whole of benefits for employees what's your job that we don't know that that's something he'll, he'll be bringing you know it'll, it'll be a it'll be a, a negotiation <coughs> Um, also, some other items he was talking about bringing uh, would be um, a telemedicine, which would be uh, a cost savings uh, to the county, um, especially up in this rural area. You know, I mean, there's not a lot of uh, doctors or or what do they call them? Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
So you could call a doctor on the phone, uh, explain your symptoms, and if he can, or he or she, um, can you know, prescribe a medication, if you have like a sinus infection or strep mm -hmm. or sore throat or something like that, uh, he can help you instead of going to, you know, instead of going to your doctor. Mm -hmm. um, some other things, uh, oh, it's, uh, um, he, he, they could uh, provide like a wellness program for us. Um, they can do, uh, they can provide, um, what else? Uh, part of it, I think what he was discussing also was benefit statements for the employees once yes. we get all the benefits in place, uh, being able to do those. And I know that's something else that we've talked about because Colonial did it quite, quite a few years ago for the county. But there's a, a cost associated with it, but, and that would be in, inclusive in what he would be able to possibly bring to the county. And, and also, you know, you, they would manage um, uh, all the costs associated with that as well. Is this a one-time deal, or is this no, no. a contract? No, I think it's Strafford. He's been there for like, eight, eight, years, years. Yeah. eight years. Eight he years. Eight years. Eight years. I would hope that the benefits would offset the cost. Oh, I'm sure they yeah. will. <laughs> well. I haven't had a chance really to talk with him further or talk um, amongst ourselves further about some of the other things that he's done um, for Stratford and that he could possibly do for us. So mm -hmm. hopefully we'll be able to have that conversation. Uh, when I was in Stratford, uh, I dealt with Lou down there as well. So mm -hmm. um, knowledgeable, sh straight shooter. Any um, idea what he cost Stratford County? I, mm, I, I, I don't know. An eight-year contract. Huh? Oh no. You know, one year agreement. Oh, ah, okay. Renewing it. <clears throat> Any comments? Hearing none, we'll go on to the next item the anti fraud policy. Uh, so, we talked about last week anti fraud policy. I've, um, I sent these off to, uh, uh, to Mike Ricker to have him, uh, you know, review it from a risk management standpoint. And in the red, as you see, are, are his changes. Um, so the scope, where you see, uh, he, wanted me, he wanted me to add elected officials and the Board of County Commissioners. Um, he helped me, uh, you know, add in some wording to what fraud is. Um, when you see the line stricken out, he want, that's he said, you know, we, we don't need that in there. Um, he had me add in theft of or misappropriation of records, furniture, fixtures, equipment, and uh, monies. Uh, he, he made a suggestion that we take out false allegations. Because he said, you know, you want people to feel comfortable coming forward to, to report it. Um, and, there, and if you have something like this in here, that he said that that may um, scare some people off from coming forward to report someone or someone's activity. So we just strip it right out. So, um, if you're okay with that, I have a clean copy uh, for your signatures. <clears throat> Do I have a motion to accept the uh, Carroll County Government anti-fraud policy? Do you have read it for a chance for discussion? <clears throat> okay, for discussion, I'll make a motion that we approve it. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. For discussion? Okay, go ahead. You just want time to read it? Is that the idea? Or? Well, I had questions about the false allegations. I mean, that yeah, I, I think there should be something in there that, that speaks to the fact that presenting a false allegation is just as fraudulent as whatever you're accusing that person of. <laughs> that is indeed also yeah. fraudulent, you know. So, 
but but he said that that would come out in in the investigation as you investigate it, you find out it's false. And so then what happens to that person? Yeah, but then what happens to that person? According to this, nothing happens. Yeah. And what happens to the person who has presented the fault? Do we have it? Where is it in here that says that? Well, I think, we'll, for, you know, in like our policies, in our, in our regular policies and procedures, there's, there's, there, there's a clause in there that talks about, you know, misrepresentation. There is. Hmm. Any chance we could see it before we vote on it? Sure. I mean, yeah, I, I have this, a question. This I is a work in progress, so I mean, we can keep going with it. You know, I mean, you, you don't get a policy right the first time. That's, that's why I, I want, you know, input from from everyone. I think people who bring something forward ought to have um, a chance to reconsider it, making sure that it is true, and not false, not hearsay. So, so, so why don't we do this? You know, so, so why we don't you know keep wasting time? Why don't you just um, review that over the next week, and then next week you can come back, or you you know you can email me your your. Can you explain to me what the last under confidentiality what the last <coughs> sentence in, intends to do? Any person contacted with respect to a suspected fraud or an ongoing audit investigation into fraud entity shall refer to the matter. So refer the matter to the Carroll County Administrator. So if I think something's happened and I tell you and it's just a rumor, you better go tell the county attorney? No. We want people to come forward to us. Well, what does this tell us? It says any person contacted with respect to a suspected fraud or an ongoing audit investigation into fraudulent activity shall refer the matter. So I'm guessing it's um, you know if someone suspects fraud's going on and um, so if someone tells someone else uh, that that they should come forward to me and then I make it make the determination. In, in the front of, of, of who needs to, you know, who needs to be notified. The sheriff, uh, the county attorney, you three should know about it. Yeah, let's wait till next week. But then, you know, we, 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 we can on keep it? going. Okay, we'll table it. Well, you won't be here next time. I won't be here next time. So then we'll, we'll, we'll table it till two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Get a full board vote. All right, table it for two weeks. Um, we have a motion on the floor to approve it, so I would suggest that we vote it down. So I'll call for a vote. Um, we could table it. Okay. What if you, well, you want to just table it? Yeah. That cancels that out. Okay. okay. So vote it, vote it down. It's so harsh at this early juncture of the draft. I make the mo motion to uh, to table uh, the Carroll County government anti-fraud policy to two weeks from our, today. Two weeks from our meeting. Two weeks from today, or the next reasonable time, certain. Who's it? October fourteenth. October fourteenth. Second. All those in support of the motion say aye. 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 So, so All right. So, but in, in those two weeks, can you, can you get back to me and so I make some changes? Yep. Thank you. Approved investment policy. Okay, um, another thing. Um, there's a couple more changes <coughs> to this one. Um, not as many changes though this time. Uh, so, persons making investment decisions for Carroll County officials and employees acting in accordance with this policy. <coughs> 
acting in good faith and exercising due diligence for investment decisions, shall be relieved of personal responsibility for an individual security credit risk or change in market value, provided that unexpected changes are reported in a timely fashion. So we want to take out a procedure and, and put policy in. So um, the person that would be doing the investment would be the treasurer. Yes. Um, is he bonded? The, that um, I asked Primex, and he said, uh, which I haven't had a chance to to look up the RSA. He said um, that elected officials, um, some are bonded um, <laughs> or insured, or insured to protect the public against. And that, that, that's what I added in here too, as well. Um, you know, he gave me the RSA to uh, you know to look up and review. Um, but he said that the treasurer is bonded or insured. Absolutely. Because way back, a number of years ago, the commissioners were all bonded. Yeah. And I believe some of the department heads were bonded. And something came up where uh, we didn't have to be bonded. Um, whether it was a law or not, I don't know, but I think... Primex follows the... The RSA, and he gave me the RSA. Okay. And if it says that you need to be bonded, you're bonded. If you need to be insured, you're insured. Um, I mean, this is something that you know we, we don't have an investment firm yet. We don't, you know, I mean, we don't really do investments with any monies. I mean, we don't even give a fund out. So, um, so this is, you know, this is for now. If we ever get an investment group, we would have to give this to them and have them review it uh, to see if it, if, if it, you know, if they, if they have any changes to make. But I just thought, you know, in the meantime, um, you know, we can start. Because remember, the, the, uh, the 14 performance audit, the matrix, mm -hmm. Um, yeah. wanted us to have, you know, all these policies, so I'm starting to do the policies. And, um, and then uh, I talked to Chuck yesterday, and uh, he, you know, he wants to start on, on some policies as well, yeah. Yeah. as soon as he gets up to speed on the ACS system. So, um, you know, we're heading in the right direction. Um, it's just, you know, it'll be a long process because of, uh, of the of the procedure we have to do, you know, we have to create it and go to you for, for changes yes. and then back. So, you know, it'll be a little while, but at least we're moving forward in the right direction. Mm -hmm. has, any, has anybody other than the delegation or commissioners looked at that matrix performance audit? Um, because my feeling is a lot of it's based on private business. And I don't know who would look at it as far as representing the county. Some I've read it several times. Yeah. Um, and I know uh, um, Commissioner Algren has read it. Um, he has it. Um, yeah, I've read it too. I mean, I've read it. I feel it, it, it makes you know, some valid points. Um, oh, yeah, I agree. Yeah. But yeah. Not, not all of it is, mm -hmm. is going to. Um, uh, Pertain to the county, right? Right. Um, but I mean, you know, it, it's a way to base our our. It's yeah. a way to base and measure our, um, our our progress forward. Has any of the county had that performance audit? I don't know. A somebody, uh, a department <clears throat> in another county did. Not the whole county, though. Huh. I want to say it was the jail, but I could be mistaken. One, one county had a partial performance done. Well, we can ask, I can ask that question on uh, Friday. All right, what do you want to do with the investment policy? Oh, uh, it's interesting. We, we, up to you. You want to table it again? Yeah. Did um, you table this for last week? No. Uh, I had Chip review it. Yeah. Um, he had a question on, on, uh, the bonding as well, so that's why I, you know, I reached out to my pricker. I think I, 
we want to make sure. I think we ought to have the treasurer bond. Well, if it's in the RSA, he, he, he is. Mm -hmm. um, if it doesn't have it in the RSA, then he's not. But okay. he is insured, as as all three of you are, and as some of us are as well. Well, again, what's the uh, privilege of the board here? What are we going to do? You want to approve it as a work in progress, or do you want to just hold it over? Hold it over. You want to hold it over? Yeah. And for what reason? I want to read it. I want to just read it. There's a lot in it. Well, is it. When did we ever get a report from the treasurer on our individual investments? Well, I think, yeah, I think that's another question, we ought to have the treasurer come in periodically, I'm not sure. He said he was going to be here today. But I mean, I think we have our financial director, mm -hmm. um, but I think the treasurer and the financial director ought to come in at the same time and give us an update as to where we stand, whether it's with our budget, whether it's in investments, or how we're doing with the bank. Uh, well, I think we had shipping here a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And I think it ought to be done maybe on a quarterly basis, like we have to report to the delegation on a quarterly basis and have it done the week before um, the delegation meets. Okay. I don't, I, that's my feeling. I don't know what <coughs> the other two guys feel about it. So are you with the treasurer and the finance director? Okay. Any comments, David? Chris? Come on. Well, yeah. Well, I think that could be certainly, you know, part of uh, our policy, such that, you know, we discuss similarly to having uh, a monthly meeting about, you know, the progress of the budget mm -hmm. and counts receivable. You know, to get a report from essentially the financial status yeah. as opposed to reviewing it quarterly with the delegation. Oh, you want to do it monthly? Yeah. Um, we were talking about that la uh, last week, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. So just, you know, a monthly update, just a, a report from the finance, the business office that would update us okay. on um, one, that the bank reconciliation was done for the previous month, that, that is done. And number two, that did they would bring us the budget, we could review it, you know, on a monthly basis, or they would report to us and give us a copy of it. Um, and then the other thing would be for us to be tracking a little more specifically the accounts receivable for the county, since that has been has raised its head as being an issue that we need to track. Mm -hmm. All right. We want to table this investment policy for yes. two weeks? Yes, I do. Okay. Farm review? Uh, last week you said you wanted uh, you wanted a farm revenue update? Yes, that's right. And on uh, Thursday, um, Will sent this to me. Um, it's produce uh, is uh, seven thousand six hundred and thirty-two dollars. Um, I think he put twenty-five hundred dollars in for revenue, so we're way above that. Let me just pull that up. Uh, wood sales. We buy at thirty-five thousand. $890. Budget was 62. We'll put in for 50 and the delegation raised it to 62. Uh, hey, this is uh, 21,374. Uh, that's way down. Uh, he normally says we get between thirty-five and forty thousand uh, dollars. What do we budget for? Uh, they grabbed the wrong budget on the way up here. So, um, right. I, I would any updates on revenue 
we ought to have a sheet to pass out so we can look at it as to what was budgeted for and what we received to date so we know where we are. Mm -hmm. So basically the farm is going to be down considerably. It's been a bad year for hay for everybody to maybe just this place. Is it because of the lack of water? Well, yeah. Or, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Uh, here we have, uh, um, we have a scrap metal for like, you know, 600 bucks for scrap metal. Mm -hmm. So we're down about $40,000. Um, Twelve of that is the delegation's fault. Mm -hmm. Because they increased it from 50 to 62 on the yeah. wood? Yeah. Okay. And Will didn't have the money to buy the wood. Yeah. Ken, what are we going to, or what are we going to do about getting that into a revolving account so that we can keep ourselves supplied with wood since we do apparently make some money at it? Um, as soon as Chuck is ready to go with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll do it. What does that entail? Just taking a chunk of money and moving into it like a little like revolving budget. Has nothing to do with the bank. We don't have to open up a new account to keep mm -hmm. it separated mm -hmm. or anything. No, we we keep you know we just have to keep just track. Keep of it, it on our books. That's right. right. Okay. And you know it, it's not a lot of money. <coughs> so, are you saying that? We don't report all the revenue, mm. but it's in a revolving fund. Well, what we did at Stratford is we took out a chunk like three thousand dollars, yeah. put it into a line. Then with that three thousand, you know, we buy wood. All the revenue coming in would go into that line. Okay. And then and then we take the uh, three thousand dollars out and throw it back in whatever we took out. And then whatever's left in there. The, the other revenue, that's what we would buy the wood with that and then oh. funnel it back in. Um, We're talking about larger sums other than that. Well, no. Yeah. You paid seventeen thousand dollars and sold for wood last year. Yeah, but 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 you Not buy all at once. Right, you don't do it all at once. You you, you buy one load, say for you know, uh, let's make it easy, two thousand dollars. And you get uh, 12 cords out of that because you buy a, like like a double load. Mm -hmm. um, then you, you sell it for, say, so So if you buy 12 cords. But we don't, Ken. We, we bring in three or four or five truckloads of this stuff and we're set up there to process it. We just, uh, I'm we just telling you how, how we did it down there. Okay. And then we begin to adapt it to there. And then you'd sell the cord for you know for two hundred fifty dollars, so two hundred fifty times twelve is like thirty five hundred dollars or so. Mm -hmm. So that thirty five hundred goes goes into that account, and then you take that fifteen hundred, put it back in the, in the revenue where you took it out before, and then that is what you use to buy more wood, and then the, the more revenue comes in, and then you keep track of it. Yeah. And then that you know with the person who bought it, their name, how much they paid for it, and then. You just do report every, every every month, and you see where you are. So you're only really, I mean, you're only using, you're only borrowing that money. You're not spending it because you're getting a lot more revenue coming back in. And so somehow, so. somehow or other, when we have a logging job done on our property, that's going to um, add into it as well. Mm -hmm. Not only are we going to buy wood outside our property, but we're going to have income from wood on, on our property. All right, I think we ought to work on it. We also just need to make sure the, the accounting of that is appropriate, that's all. Oh, yeah. um, you know, we need to check with uh, the auditors, just because that, that revolving account may not work 
specifically. I, I, apparently, you were doing it down in Stratford, but I'm not sure our accountant will agree with They that. have the same accountant as well. Yeah, it's the same accountant. <laughs> same order. Of course, if you're an accountant, why wouldn't you? Well, because as as we, keep we are indeed spending the money. For spending the money, that then that's money that needs to be appropriated. But it's not tax money. It's in, it's revenue. Um, well, you know, once again, you, you can have different philosophies about if you're spending money, are you spending mm -hmm. money? If you're spending money to buy stuff, then you're spending money to buy stuff. Whether you use that money to turn it around to turn a profit or not is, you know, mm -hmm. revenue should be showing up on the revenue side and, and this expenditure should be showing up on the expenditure side. Um, so that, I'm, that's why I'm saying we just need to make sure that this accounting method is, mm -hmm. is okay. Um, or if we need to have, you know, set up some sort of enterprise. It almost sounds like we're setting up a mini enterprise fund within the farm in order to do that. So, so I'm just, as I said, I'm just making sure that, you know, that that is appropriate. Um, Way, oh, an appropriate way to handle it. So do you think you ought to, I, traffic, think, I, mean, I think Ken, you ought to have Frank, uh, Chuck um, call the accountants and see if if we can. And well, and and, and um, uh, Chris, Diane uh, Legier will be here on the 14th anyway, so we can talk to her about how she did it down there. But that's oh, okay. okay. And you know we'll still call. Hold off, John. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you. Go ahead. It's not my understanding that uh, the wood operation is a supplement to tax the cost of the tax payer. A supplement. Well, the overall cost the tax payer is paying the account. Yeah. Right. Is that revenue. It's not that you're spending it. And spending it to create revenue. Yeah. Well, yeah, but that's like a working capital fund. What is the issue? Yeah. Well, Christopher was mentioned something about spending it. That money's coming in. It was my understanding that the whole idea of having the work processing and the sales was to like to keep the taxpayers' expenses to the county. Down, Low. Down. Right, yeah. yeah. So you're not really spending it that's going into the, the account. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thing to work on, Ken. Yep. All right, line item transfers? Nope. You don't have any? Uh, is there a cycle contract? Oh, I'm sorry. Third type of contract? Yes, sir. Um, Stericycle is the company that picks up our hazardous waste from the nursing home and has for quite some time. And I know I noticed this month that there was a an increase in the uh, the amount when I signed the check and. Um, began doing a little digging and it's kind of disturbing but it's also on the plus side or on the good side we discovered another situation which we can correct and have corrected and well assure us that this kind of thing won't happen again. Stericycle uh, contract was the first one we can find was signed or that they can find and I can find was signed in 2006 by the maintenance manager at the nursing home. Now why the nursing home maintenance manager is signing a contract, no, I don't know. At the jail, right? No, well, he's, he's now the maintenance oh, manager okay. at the jail, but this was at the nursing home when he was the maintenance manager there. The Are contract... You Joe? Joe? Huh? You talking about Joe? Yeah. Yeah, that was when we were coming to get all the maintenance people in the wind department. He was heading that. That's why he signed it probably for the, for the nursery. The, uh, the contract 
doesn't have any um, step increases. It's a three-year <coughs> contract. Uh, they can raise the price anytime they want, as they've done in the last month. Um, it was just a foolish contract, and worse than that, it could, it was renewed uh, automatically if, if if either party hadn't notified the other within 60 days of the contract. And we go to 2009. It's signed by Mike Eldridge, another maintenance manager. And why it wasn't signed by the nursing home? Because it's the jail sends their hazardous waste to the nursing home. The nursing home packages it up and it goes out. Um, and again, in 60 days, nobody notified it. The bad part of the story is it started off at $243 on the uh, pickup. Today it's Twelve hundred and something oh. dollars. There are a other month. people a, 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 a month. A month. But that's also a pickup because they only come in here twice a month. I think they I think it's seven contract. Um, what we've done for the naysayers on the delegation that don't think we can run a lemonade stand. Um, we have a contract book now that all all contracts will go in. They'll go to Ken first. Um, the reason this one um, seems to have gotten out of control is we had the book, but we didn't have any front page that tells when the contract was up, or we didn't know whether there wasn't one. They now have it so that at 60 days ahead of time, it'll be flagged and we'll know that we've got to let them know. And also, there won't be any more um, uh, open-ended contracts. All contracts will be have to be signed. And, um, should be put out for bid, but at least it won't be automatic where somehow it gets tucked away and nobody knows about it. Um, we've turned the, we're attempting to see if we can do anything to negotiate ourselves out of the contract. Oh, and these people are so nice that when I called and complained, they agreed to drop our monthly rate from 1200 to uh, to just under a, $936. because we're good, loyal customers. But they'd even give us a bigger break if we'd sign on for another two years. The contract ran now, or expired the end of August and September of this year with the new month for another three years. Um, they, they're very nice. They've offered us $9, isn't it? Yeah. Um, if we'll sign on for an additional two years, making it a five-year contract. This kind of thing will stop. You go, you read the uh, performance audit, there's nothing in it about this kind of thing. It's just something that we discovered on our own here and have taken care of. Thank you for doing that, Commissioner Bassett. Um, I think there, there ought to be, I don't know if it has to be a policy, I think it's an RSA that says, all contracts are signed by the Board of Commissioners, or approved by the Board of Commissioners. All contracts. Every contract. Now, we need to get that out. Department heads meeting, mm -hmm. um, you ought to bring that up. Um, a lot of them know that, but there's still a few that, that don't. And that goes for everybody, whether it's elected officials or whatever. Contracts are all signed by the Board of Commissioners, or approved by the Board of Commissioners. And as it should be. And that, it should go through you to us. That question came up at my last department meeting. And uh, so the, the, they're all aware of it. Okay. Um, Excuse me, Ken. What would be their question? Does that seem like a strange thing to do? Yes, to they, through you or through they, they wanted the, you know, they, 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 they've been signing contracts on their own. Well, that's how we well, get into this mess. Right. Yeah. And I had the same experience down this drafter with stereocycle. Um, except we had a, a five-year agreement, automatic renewal. Mm. Um, it was signed by someone long ago who doesn't even, didn't even work there anymore, and we didn't know about it until yeah. they started jacking up the prices. Yeah. Um, and so uh, after the five years, I was able to, you know, I was able to cancel it. And when I canceled it, they said, oh, you know, we'll we'll give it to you for like six hundred dollars. It was up to almost eighteen hundred dollars down yeah, there, yeah. and I'm like, wow, awful nice of you. Now you want to give it for six hundred dollars, as opposed to 
you know. Um, so I was able to go out to bid, and there were six other vendors. Yeah, I was going to ask you. Yeah, how six other vendors. The strange thing is, I pulled a. Uh, Kathy can go back till 2006, so we pulled out all of us. And, and, and what they've charged us, we have a contract here, and so much we got to pay quarterly, they make the pickup. It varies all over the lot. I mean, yeah. there's no, if it was one session with two or three of them were $1,300, and then it drops back to 800 yeah. and something. Is it based on the amount they pick up? Um, we were allowed X amount of pickups. Right, yeah, you're, you're allowed to well, be we never, we never go over that. And if you have, say, you get, you, when, when you do your flu injections in, in, mm -hmm. you know, in November, um, you get more, and, and, if you don't, and if you want them to come pick it up, if you want an extra stop, it's like an extra, it's like... Was it, I think it said on the last contract we looked at at the bottom, it's $115. For like an extra stop or something. Or an extra box. Yeah. Now, this is all medications? Does it include needles and other stuff? It, it, it's yeah. all needles. It's all yeah. stuff. Okay. There's another company um, that I investigated a few years back. It's, you buy this, it's like a clave, and you put all the plastic needles and all the syringes in there, yeah. and you melt it. And it melts, it goes up to, I don't know, 2,000 degrees. We, we looked at that, too, just not too long ago. Oh, yeah? Well, and it melts it, and then... So that'd be two and a half years ago. And then you can just store it right in the waste management dumpster. Um, but that's like $25,000, and you have yeah. to have a special room for it with special ventilation. And, um, special insurance. Probably, yeah, because then special liabilities. Special handling, because sounds like, you, you know... Sounds like a lot of... A lot of special fees. Probably why we didn't do it, but I remember. Yeah. I, I can't remember whether it was a jail or the nursing home. I think it was a nursing home that came in and said we ought to buy one of these things and do it ourselves. But I probably was a cost involved why we didn't do it. Um, and th there was a buyout. Did you yeah. mention that? I wasn't even going to bring that up okay. because it's so ridiculous. <laughs> we can buy our way out for $16,000. <laughs> A way out of the contract? Yeah. Could you so how talk with them again and see if you could lower it a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so the contract we have with them, when does it end? The, uh, the presumed? Three, three more years. They had three more years on this contract, and that contract because it automatically renews yes. for a five-year term? No, three. three years. For a three-year term, and it just renewed? Yes. Yeah. But they raised the price. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they raised well, it over the past. They don't have. I just. I, I say, Chris, there is nothing in there that stipulates they can raise it whenever they it want. It says when their costs go up, they can raise it to us. They went up two hundred dollars over last month. So, where? What's the status right now? Did you negotiate this nine hundred and seventeen dollars? I believe I have. And Not nine hundred and seventeen. That's if we want to be good guys and give them another two years. Uh, 936 dollars. On top of the three years or yeah. including you no, know, the, within the, the higher years. number is for being a good customer. And um, the lower number is for an additional two years. Additional. What's, what's lock one? Look. Oh, look. Yeah, nine hundred thirty-six bucks. If we uh, uh, we want to have a two-year extension, no, eight hundred. Eight, excuse me, eight hundred. Can't even read my own note yet. That looks to me like it's eight hundred and eighty-five dollars and thirty cents. If we want to sign up for an additional two years, if we want to, just because we're good customers, um, it'll be nine hundred. It should be nine hundred and thirty-six dollars. Down from twelve hundred right there, right? This is per month. Yeah. And this is gonna go nine hundred and thirty six dollars is gonna go for another three years. No, August. It's not. Oh, and the other thing is if we extend it for two years, they would lock that price in. So they can lock the price in any time. Yeah, yeah, anytime they want. I think the best thing to do is get out of this contract as fast as we can. Did if we can.
So, did, did you talk to the county attorney at all? Uh, I left it off in their office. So. Okay. That's my my suggestion is to have the county attorney mm -hmm. review that contract because um, there's a reason why they're bringing the price down fast because I and I had they're trying to Stratford County Attorney look at this as well because I thought but nothing can do it. But all right, so he he wrote them a letter. For the next three years, we're going to be paying $936 per month. No. No. That's what maybe next month's check might should be that much. And after that, if their costs go up, they can do what they've been doing all along. I see. From so we budgeted $885 per month for this last year into to the end of this year. Mm -hmm. They went up to $1,200 in August or July, August, August. Well, so, I mean, it was it was a thousand something before that. A so. thousand eight, and then it went to a thousand two hundred. So, so that that's going to be over over by the end of the year. I can tell you that. Actually, you you just signed a transfer two weeks ago for that. So, um, this is something that is, it, is it hard to budget because we don't know. When they're going to raise the price? Is it too early to send them a letter saying that? Um, yes. A sixty-day notice or whatever it is. You can only send within yes. six months, right? Within six months of the end of the contract. Yeah. Or sixty days. Sixty days within the within the end of the contract. Sixty days. You can't send it any earlier than that. I thought you'd have to give them sixty days. Yeah. You do. But you can't give it within six months or something, right? Oh. The print is so small that you need a magnifying glass to read it. Yeah. So, so we had to there about six months, Ken. It's sixty days to read the party to get out of the. So if you send them a letter now saying sixty days, days three years prior, sixty days prior to the end of three years, we want uh, them to prior that. to the end of the term. Are they right? going to acknowledge that? Huh? Are they going to acknowledge that if we send it to them today? A cancellation letter? I think that's what somebody's asking. That's what I'm asking, oh. yeah. But we'd have to look at the contract. Well, but I mean, lower price, that might be worth trying. What? I said they might they might acknowledge it with a lower price, but we're, we're stuck with three years. So, uh, Run it a, new a new process, though, should catch all of these. Yes. And we're not doing any more automatic renewals. We're getting rid of those yeah. in every contract renewal or any new contract that, that we sign. Mm -hmm. And we ought, to, we ought to have somewhere, I don't know that we need to have it writing, but these contracts shouldn't be open-ended like this so we can raise the price anytime our costs go up. Yeah. You know, it's got to be like the, the waste of three, three years and we get so much each year. We can't budget if, we, if that's the way it's going to be. Right. And, and who knows? I mean, so is that $200 for every customer or just us? Yeah. Right. I mean, this is a national company. They're all over the place. Okay. Right. And, and the reason why they are so quickly reducing their price is because they have to, because their contract will become null and void if they don't. Okay? Because the clause says they have to prove their costs have gone up. You should talk to the county attorney about how we can fight this, mm -hmm. or we can deal with this, because they they can't just willy nilly raise the price, and that's why they're so quick to lower the price, because they don't yeah. want to go to court with us either over what the price is. That's you know the contract's a contract, but there's certain things they can and can't do within the contract, and that's why they're they're trying to keep. They're trying to protect themselves to stay within the contract, so mm -hmm. the contract does not become null and void. They raise the price to $1,200. They're lowering the price down, and they're offering to do that because they should have never been able to raise it to $1,200. Mm -hmm. When they raised it to $1,200, they avoided their contract by their, uh, by their performance of the contract. Mm -hmm. Okay, Because they raised the price, they didn't have the legal right to do it. That's why they're trying to lower it and trying to get us to agree to it. All right, pass it by the county so attorney. That's where yeah, that's where the rub is. See what we can do. Next item is line item transfers. Uh, advertising, we 
we did it last week uh, to come out of the contingency. Uh, the executive committee said no. So now we, uh, so I'm taking $300 out of the nursing home and $300 out of the jail. So $600 going to advertising. And that's going to HR? Yes. Okay. Uh, is the policy going to be that all advertising money comes out of everybody's budget and goes to HR? Uh, you know, I, I'm looking at two different ways and I mean, it's, this isn't working. And you, you and I guess it was Denny at the time didn't like the idea. I think that it ought to come out of each department's budget and when it do the work. Yeah. I think that's only I mean, you know, a fair no way to do it. Yeah. And now she's sacrificing because the jail has lost four or five people and the nursing home's lost seven people. Right. All right. Is it a is it a way or a means of identifying where the advertising is being used? What do you mean? Well, if it was all in one budget, an HR budget, then we don't need any transfers. What we're doing or what we're saying is the jail has an advertising budget, nursing home has an advertising budget. Are we doing that to identify where the advertising money is being used? Yes. And not penalizing her for has absolutely no control over what employees come and go. True. And she can't she sets a budget and now um, you know, there's nothing to pay for anything with and the delegation in their wisdom says no you can't take it out of the contingency fund. Then where are we supposed to take it? We're going to take it from somebody else's department and put them in a bond. I think each department ought to be charged. If, if you've got 10 ads you had for the year, that cost ought to go to your department. And when that does it, so that at least we know the people, there's only one person looking and watching where the best place to advertise is. But ultimately, HR handles the advertising for the whole complex. Yes, yes. but the, the cost gets credited. And the cost the goes to each department. That would be my suggestion. I agree. Okay. That the, the cost should be accounted for per <coughs> whatever department is using it. Yeah. You know. Can we say the same thing about health insurance? <laughs> well, the health insurance, that's... Well, we do? We do. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we do parse it out some other that items manner. that they wanted to combine. I'd rather have health insurance, uh, I, one line item for health insurance for the jail and this building, and the nursing home have insurance all in that one, as opposed to each department, department within. Yep. Say that again, Ken. Okay. Right now, health insurance is in each department. Yeah. Line. Yes. Yep. Yep. I'd rather have two insurances. One for the jail and this building, insurance. Well, we'll call it justice and administration, and then have the nursing home insurance has come out of one line, one line item in in, in the nursing home. Okay, well, playing the devil's advocate, what do you do with the farm? Well, that'll fall under here under too. the jail or under us. Yeah. Oh, so it will be not administration but commissioners and well, we'll, and we'll, we'll call it justice administration. Yeah. Okay. Administration would be under the jail. I mean, under the farm. <coughs> it's just what easier. What would be the advantage of that? It's just easier, you know, to you know to take the money out as opposed to having each. I mean, there's there's if fifteen want, different line items for for each. In, you know, in health insurance, dental insurance. You know, insurance is insurance. So just put it under one. Then we we'll, want to combine all all types of insurance too. We'll eliminate all the you know all these lines. Um, and, and, and then have property and liability, again, take that line out of each department and put it under Justice Administration and Nursing Home. Okay, so we're reducing one, a lot of line items here. Let's go one step farther or mm -hmm. further. Why not just make another whole block and have the items, insurance, and, uh, and uh, anything else, or IT, and 
So that all of them are combined? Well, telephone, telephone, utilities, electric, and so forth? Well, I want, I want to have electric so, <coughs> so, so we can see, you know, electricity, you know, out of this building and electricity out of that building, electricity out of that one. I think electricity, I think utilities should, should remain separate. Gas, electricity, um, water, so we can keep track of it. Well, so why not, like, we have other fees and services? Why not just a line item for insurance for the, for the complex? No, I'd rather have insurance, insurance. So we know that that's insurance. So it's well, not all one thing. Everybody down is insurance, but combine them all and put it in there. Why even break it up into three departments? Just jail, administration, and uh, justice. Because for the, it'd be easier for the nursing home, for the cost, um, uh, the cost report over there, it, it's already broken out. You know, you start mixing stuff together, it, it gets a little convoluted. Okay. Um, I'd rather just have insurances, health and dental, as one line item. Okay. Um, so, you know, we, we can still track it. Um, and then the property liability, uh, the sheriff would have uh, uh, like a law enforcement line. The benefit of the insurance being lumped is that when, like our department downstairs, it hides a person and, and it blows it out, yes. you get to transfer money from yep. someplace else. But if you get it all in one, then you can cover it. Cover it, right? Because the, because you know we um, say you know deeds gets one, mm -hmm. but the county attorney loses one. Yeah. So we we're able to absorb it. Yeah. You know, or by, or they gain two and lose one. I think it's worth looking at. Anything else in the line item transfers? No. Okay, administrator. Wait a minute. So where are we taking out the advertising? You just signed it. You, you just signed it. Yeah. Well, I didn't look at it. I didn't. He said, and I forgot what he said. An admin in the nursing home. Uh, for three hundred dollars, and admin in the jail three hundred dollars. Because admin or ad that's ad kind of where advertising? Came from. Admin. Yeah. Admin. Okay. No. Advertising or admin? Admin. Administrative. Yeah. Out of out of the O two nine in the jail, and out of O six seven in the nursing home. Okay. But so why not advertising? Because they didn't have it in there. Right. Because they don't have an advertising line. Or right. We don't have it. They moved it all to. Jail doesn't have advertising. advertising. Nursing home doesn't. That's what that is. Okay. It's advertising for like, um, you know, social events and stuff. I took it out of that one. Okay. Um, we have uh, uh, some new county seals that, that finally came in. Uh, these are for the trucks and the vehicles. It, it goes on the side of the door. Yeah. And it's something that that like commissioners had asked for. I thought I, I thought I was supposed to wear that on my lapel. <laughs> That's not a bad yeah, idea. I'm, I'm we should get them. I'm going to need a bigger suit to wear it on my back or something. These are very nice. Um, Lieutenant Phillips at the jail. Uh, in, in a past life, he used to be a sign guy, so he's going to install those for us. Oh, good. You know, because uh, they're they're difficult to to install. How many? How many is it? Uh, I think we got eight, eight. So two on each vehicle. Two so for four vehicle. vehicles. Yeah. Uh, so we got two pickups, and we got the superintendent already took his for his truck. Oh, he did. Yeah. Okay. How many there? Six. Two, eight, 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 four, six. So there's actually ten, because if there's six here, Jason already took. Two, so so there's ten. Well, that's good. Uh, next is how we uh, did the report uh, for you guys to review this week, and we'll go over it uh, at at a later date. Always help with the paper. <laughs> I know. So far, we've received one uh, bid for uh, for skilled services. 
Let's, let's go back here. Let's look at page two on his revenue on his report. We, we <coughs> let's see, delegation, commissioners. All right, eleven eleven million dollars in revenue under 2015 delegation, almost $12 million, and how much have we picked up? Seven million, eight million of 11 million, and that's the eight month average? I guess I don't understand, total, I see total, okay. Eight month actual total, seven, seven, seven million, million three fifty four. And we need to get to eleven million nine thirty eight. Yeah. So So we're six We're we're about sixty one percent. Sixty one percent and we're at eight months. Yeah. So Oh, okay, okay. Why does it, oh, the September 29th is the day you're handing it out, not the, nothing to do with the report. It's through August 15th, apparently. Through August, the end of August. So he said, you know, um, to review this over the next week or two and he'll come back and, and answer any questions you may have. <clears throat> so am I right? We've collected 61% of the revenue in an eight month period of time. 61% towards the, the 12 million. Yes. Yeah. So if you look at in the eight month variance, there's, there's a lot of negative numbers in there. Yeah. Put increase for delegation, so they increased it over us by by a million three. Am I reading that right? Looks that way. Page two. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what he's saying. So One point for delegation. If you go to page six. <coughs> Two million short at the end of eight months. That's going to continue on through the year. We don't expect any more revenue. Well, don't we expect about a? Now that's a hundred thousand, isn't it? Yeah, a hundred fifteen. Yeah. So we're going to fall short. Unless some other other department like Registry of Deeds can pick up two million dollars between now and then. I don't think that's gonna happen. Not in three months. But anyways, you know, just you this, you know, there's a lot of information here and I don't Am I reading this properly? We're we're projecting at the end of the at the end of this year. Well the first thing I think we need to do is two point two point one million dollars. Deficit in uh, or shortage in revenue. Yep. Well, yeah, First thing we need to look at is that the numbers he used do not reflect the supplemental budget changes. Well, that's true. So well, that's the first thing we need to take it take into account that the, you know that these numbers. I mean the. the but that's amount, why we needed a supplemental budget. Right. I'm not discounting that, but I'm just saying that. You know, yep. the impending doom of not reaching the those budget numbers aren't quite as, you know, and 
is because those have been changed. Yeah. That we have reduced the revenues from 11.9, my recollection was down to 10.5 or so, somewhere in that zone. 10.6. 10.6. Right. So, 13, you know, $1.3 million less in, uh, in the revenue. So, these numbers don't reflect that change. Okay. So, before no, we get to, to, to come up with a 2.4. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I just got this, but. Another 200,000 in there for BEAS, so that brings it up to 2.3. Well, oh, that's good news in, in uh, uh, outbound. In skill, it, uh, skill's time to go up. Uh, Where are you looking at that? 11, 12, and 13. Uh, Medicaid's going down, and private pay's going up. So, those, those are all good signs. Private pay could change, so. In July, we had eleven emissions. I think Ken or Commissioner Oliver want to talk with the social workers over at the nursing home and see how we can speed up the admission, the time that the beds are empty. Um, I talked to Howie about it yesterday, and he said, you know, he's working with them, so. Because that's key for uh, revenue. Yeah. Um, is it the social workers that are holding things up? We were told that it was a doctor. Well, is I think doctor, it's a combination of a lot of things. Has the doctor got straightened out yet? Doctor for the facility, does that get straightened out? Do we know what the progress is there? Uh, apparently he's still taking four day uh, weekends. And he's his his term ends October, October 21st. And we got somebody else ready to come in October 21st. Yeah, how he's still working with one point with others trying to you know nail down the. Uh, I wonder if we should have somebody come in. The contract. Hmm? How he's still trying? You know, he's still working on another contract with. Uh, uh, Frisbee. With Frisbee. It's got to it's got to have to be a priority pretty soon. Mm -hmm. so oh, I'm right out of time. I told him. Mm -hmm. I told him. Uh, <clears throat> looks like uh, we had some some really big credit card sales in the in, in the cafe. Mm. Oh, uh, almost a uh, thirty-two percent <coughs> increase. And um, Holly told me yesterday he's, he's talking to um, the credit card people, uh, trying to renegotiate that uh, fee schedule. So again, you know, there's a lot of information here. Um, Boy, there really is. Yeah. And the unscheduled absences. Yeah. Cost of agency staffing is going up. What yeah. page is that? 36. 36. In July, we had uh, uh, about 10 new hires. And we had six terminations. One of the things that um, you might know on there, cost of agency staffing, it gives you the uh, the numbers in the vertical column, but it doesn't tell you what they represent. Is that $1,000 in January? That's, that's what we paid? $1,200 in January? That must be what it means. Uh, if you look on page 34. Yeah. Yeah, okay. 
We're twenty thousand dollars over budget in agency staff. Yes. Where 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 are we in in, in uh, attempting to have some incentive programs for our own employees? I and mean, when I sign a check and I see eighty five dollars an hour for a temporary so and so, I well, can't we can't I, we can't we pay our own employees? You know, if you stay another. I know there's some stipulations about how long they can work, but you know, if we give you double time, you can't do. Are you interested in staying? That's still going to be cheaper than paying. As, as long as you've got some uh, limitations put on that, uh, I could foresee somebody staying out so that somebody else would get double pay. I mean, you know? I would think in most circumstances they would be getting overtime rate right? if there's. You know, if they're a full-time employee, mm -hmm. they, are. they are. They are. That's obviously it isn't working if we're if we're paying other people to come in here to the tune we're paying them. But, well, I agree, but I think where we're at is the situation of not having enough people. We need what we should really be doing is you know increasing our in-house. Um, well, maybe not increasing, but because I, my understanding is we're trying to do that, but you know. Um, Doing in-house education to get people certified to be LNAs, uh, we can do that to help use to use outside agencies to get our own folks, uh, recruit them ourselves, train them ourselves, get them certified ourselves. We do have an incentive for RN, right? Yes, for them to go. They can, there's an educational incentive. And we have one person doing that right now. Yes. We even tried in the advertising piece of you, uh, probably about a month ago, we even tried doing a, um, a bonus if you if you come and stay, you get a bonus. We tried that. That really didn't oh, generate a lot. Like a sign-on bonus? Yeah. sign-on bonus. Um, and the issue was the agency fee was not necessarily the L LNAs. It was more of the RNs because we were very short of RNs. So there was a, a, a higher agency rate then we should be fully staffed now as far as RNs I believe unless maybe there's one one vacancy for one RN. And that's the eleven to seven shift. 11, we yeah. have a hard time filling that. Yeah. Mm. So we're we've worked hard and we've done lots of hiring sessions and had a lot of people come on board, especially since those numbers that he's given you from July. We just actually had a hiring session two, last week or the week before last that we hired like eleven people for different various wow. departments. So we've been trying, they've been trying um, with the turnover. It's just a little difficult. And in the summertime, with vacations and call-outs, that's where the agency fee was very high at that point. So I, hopefully it's, a, it's much more in control. We met with the union. Ken and I met with the union the other day. And hopefully we've got some, um, some um, good groundwork laid for the call outs, the personal time, and the emergencies, and all that. So, hopefully, things will be moving forward. Well, also, with the RNs, is having more people available for the per diem as opposed to having um, agencies using the agency staff as having per diem staff right. that would be willing to come in. And, you know, perhaps we could work a little harder about letting those folks know who are RNs in the area know what's available or consider changing that because, you know, to make that better. I mean, to make it less than the agency, but maybe a little more than we're already paying for the per diems, if that's where we're having the biggest issue, that might be a consideration to look at. So those are the those are the, the, the conditions that cause the agency issues, is essentially not having enough staff and not having enough per diem people, so then we have to go to agency. But it sounds like we're at least headed in the right direction, and in previous years we've done pretty well on the agency line. So, so that sounds good, so it sounds like the projection for the agency lines 
should be coming down. Um, so, so this is interesting stuff, but you know, I mean, are we, you planning to diary this, to, to review this for a couple of weeks? So this is, is indeed a, a situation where um, how we should be here, to yeah. kind of explain its numbers. I mean, I've, I've seen some of these before at the subcommittee meeting, um, and, I, and I think most of these numbers were generated from that time. But for him to explain out where he got his numbers from, and that's why I thought you know next week would be a good, you know, because there's a lot of information you had to go over in, in you know, at, at this meeting. So if you look at it throughout the week, next week I would come back, make your notes. And then we can zero right in on yeah. it. Okay. I mean, I mean, when I look at the bottom line, when you get to get to page seven, he is basically trying to tell us that, in accordance with the budget, he's doing very well. <coughs> so the revenues are down, but so are the expenses. So his effect on the overall budget is looks pretty good. Positive, the, yeah. yeah, it looks pretty good at this point. <coughs> and that's even the older budget. So. Um, that deficit number was the overall deficit. We already budget a deficit. It's not a deficit beyond budget. That was the deficit. So uh, I believe is what's going on in that in that and, two and million dollar number. To. You know, to get those things rolling. But okay, what else you got? Um, you you asked me last week about the taxes and yes. what it covers. Did you you have, you have a little packet in there? So uh, with with uh, the registrar's help, we went over. Um, so the first tax bill is uh, twenty eight hundred, and that's the area. Uh, it's uh, two hundred fifteen acres where the water tower is uh, across the road, uh -huh. and it covers the water tower, the shooting range, and over to the uh, courthouse. The next one is. We're all, it's 21 acres, we're all, the blueberries are planted, that field there. Yeah. Wraps around, goes down to the stone wall. That's $400. Uh, the next one is 15 acres, it's next to the, the Cornerstone Christian Academy on the other side of Route 28. And the next one is, is uh, 36 acres on the other side of Route 28, on the other side of... Um, the Cornerstone Christian Academy to the Wolfboro Town Line. We have 36 acres over there. Right. Which is good because I didn't know we even had this stuff. Can we talk about them? Yep, let's just go through them real quick and then we can go back. Uh, we have 125 acres up across the street here on the back side of the water tower. Um, Are you on the first page now? No, now we're on second to the last. And there's uh, 125 acres there. The last one is 361 acres, and that's this where we are now. Admin, nursing home, jail, the walking trail, out next to that white house on 171, the backside going all the way down uh, um, to 28. Yep. And that's where all this... That's where all those are. Okay, any questions, Commissioner? We yes. Should, we should have to pay any taxes. You should pay twice as much. I don't know why we even pay tax. It's ridiculous. That's right. I mean, we're only paying people itself. in the Bossipi Village is supporting the rescue system here for the. That has nothing to do with this. It certainly does. What do you mean? This goes to the town. Then go to the fire well, district. That's what I'm saying. It goes to the town and doesn't come to us. No, okay. Let's go question. to the blueberries. Can we go to the blueberries? Sure. Okay. I don't understand this bill. We've got 400, it's 21 acres. We've got $409 for the tax bill. Um, it's in current use. We've got 125 acres on the back page in uh, current use and it's twenty two dollars why is why are we um, why are we uh, paying so much for the area of the blueberries if you I don't know 
But in your packet, <coughs> we, we, the county received a letter from the Town of Ossipee Assessing Department saying that Granite Hill Municipal Services has recently completed a revaluation of all properties within the Town of Ossipee. So the new preliminary assessed value reflects market value as of 4-1-2015. Values of properties have increased or decreased at different rates since the last revaluation due to market fluctuations. Therefore, it is not relevant to compare your old value with your new value. Typically, if assessed values increase, the tax rate decreases. So these are, um, these are old bills. I'm not sure what, what the new is going to look like. Um, well, I mean, the question is still there. We've got 125 acres in current use and we're paying $35. We've got 21 acres in current use and we're paying 409 I don't know. I don't think we should pay any of it. I think we ought to pay more for the $20 pay any. one. And, and why is Ospie Corners have their own, get their own tax thing? What are you looking at there? Right on the bill, right on the bottom. It says Ospie Corners, a dollar one. A dollar one per, what was it, per thousand? What, what are you looking at? Right at the page. bill, right here. On the left hand bottom corner, it says Ossipi oh, yeah. well, OSCRNR. Is that for the fire department? No. Fire district? We're, so we're paying taxes to the fire district? We ought to get some service out of it. Yeah. Oh. And we, we do provide them the water, too. That's interesting. I was on the impression that we didn't pay the, the county for well, Ossipi Corner or anything. So, really. Huh. I'm going to have to do a lot of backtracking here. Well, I think so. Sure. So why, um, so why is the first one so high? It's twenty-eight hundred dollars, and all that's up there is just the water tower and the water. Plant. Well, the reason it's off to be corner is that's the precinct tax that shows up on most of those. No, I'm talking about the whole bill. The whole oh, bill. I know. I know you're talking about the whole bill, but the reason it says off to be corner. It used to say precinct. Oh. Now it says off the corner. Now what was your question about the water tower? 215 acres for, for almost $3,000 yeah. in taxes. Why is that? Well, because, um, what, what page are you on? Here? First page. Page one. First page. Um, that's because the water system up there, the, the tanks and the pump house can't be in current use. They're taxed at ad valorem rate. And the rest of it's taxed at current use. So they have the they have the land at two hundred twenty one thousand dollars, but then they have a current use credit of one hundred sixty one thousand. Right, and that's that's for the land that's in current <coughs> use. The place with his buildings, the buildings are worth two hundred and twenty five thousand, according to this. Um, that would be your tanks, your pump house. They can't be in current use. Storage tank. Storage tank. But I still don't understand why the blueberries are uh, $409. There's only the current use. Though. Yeah. It should be $3 or it should be $4. Yeah. 15, 18. They have different categories, though, I guess. Huh? They have different categories for different types <coughs> of current use. Yes, there are, but there, I don't believe there's any that's going to. Tell you blueberries make the land worth that much. You know, there's different rates for softwood, hardwoods, but there isn't for berries. That's the loop, and we don't, well, I guess we do sell them, so. Farm, perhaps. Farming. Well, that's where we get current use is, is the farming, right? right. John, your word is most likely okay. Oh. It's giving me a little wet going. <laughs> <coughs> well, each one of those bills that you have there, Ken. Yes, sir. You have the, the is reflected in this chart. The, the ones you got from Granite Hill assessing, 
-hmm. I think we ought to make a note to call Grant. We can set up an appointment and ask him why. Okay. I asked. I think I asked this question to all the other counties. <coughs> Do they pay a county tax to the town that they're in? Stratford pays about um, thirty-six hundred dollars for their three hundred and twelve acres. It's for the land, not for the buildings. The buildings are taxable. Hmm? The buildings are taxable. The land is not. Nope. No. No. Huh? There's a difference. We, we have two. We have two parcels. Well, they 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 have two parcels across the river where it used to have a water. Uh, the, the water pump was used to be there because they used to use the water from the Pachico. There's like two two acre plots right right on the river, um, and that's why they pay tax. So they don't pay on anything else. So my question is, why is it? Why do we pay? You know, seven thousand dollars a year. Well, it says building hit two hundred twenty-five thousand. So we're, I was always told whenever I did it, and Randy did it before me, that uh, the land that's in the only place that wasn't taxable was the built was the uh, thought was the building, and yet they show it here as taxable. Well, one we have to the nursing home, the jail, and the building, it's only two hundred thirty-six dollars, and that's zero for. For the building. I don't know, you know, because at least we're just paying ourselves, real, really. Oh, yeah. Well, county, we have a, it's 55 cents a thousand. So some of that money is coming back to us. It just doesn't make sense. We have to cut a check. Where'd you, where, what are you talking about, 55? So we're cutting a check to ourselves. Mm. I don't know, it just seems a little strange, but you know, here again, I think this is something that the New Hampshire Association of Counties could look at and find out what other counties are paying. Are they paying the the, the town at the uh, facilities are located in. Are they paying the taxes? What are, What are the laws? I mean, maybe we can save uh, a couple thousand dollars here, and not pay the town tax. Don't forget the county tax that's shown here is a dollar ten, not fifty five. That's half a year. Yeah. So this is half a year too. Yeah. Yeah. The bill is half a year. Yeah. 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 We've got about seven thousand. Okay, I was going to say six. Okay. I think we ought to look into it further and find out if we can't reduce that. What is the amount? What is the other amount due? Six seventy eight seventy. That was that. That was a mistake. That one. It's. This was supposed to be paid by uh, day logging. I guess we had a timber cut. Oh yeah. Okay, that's and, it. Timber and tax. they added it onto our bill. Okay. So there was a credit. So we only. Oh, paid it says up here, yeah. Right. Yep. Twenty-eight sixty. I asked that same question. Um, and I guess they hadn't paid it, so they put it on our bill. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so the tax rate in Ossipi is twenty dollars and two cents per thousand. Where do you see that? Oh, the total tax rate is $10.02. $10 oh, yeah. That's for half a year. Yep. So the tax rate in us be is $20, $20 per thousand. I don't think so. Not bad. quite that much. Well, it must be. If this is, is half, half, a, half a year. Lisa's shaking her head, it is. Huh? I think it is. Yeah, I think it is good. <coughs> That's first bill tax rate. Hmm. Hale's location is less than five bucks. And I want to say uh, Eaton's must be around 10 or 11, maybe. Well, that's interesting. You look in the upper right-hand corner, amount due, 2860. 
and yet they sent the bill out at 353870. You someone called up and said, hey, that's wrong. But they still have printed all these bills and sent them out. Because up at the top it says 2860. Yeah. Yeah. It is mm -hmm. interesting. Okay. Let's move on. So should so do you want to go with me to one of these? Yeah. To ask a question? Yeah. All right. So I'll schedule that whatever day is good for you. You're going to talk with the tax collector, right? Yeah, no, right. we'll talk with Granite Hill. With Granite Hill. Oh. Um, another thing I wanted to bring up is um, the jail has to be inspected. Yes. I will do my turn. Okay. And then it will be uh, Christmas turn in six, six months. Okay, six months. So in March, yeah. inspected jail. Excellent. <laughs> well, you haven't been over there either, have you? <clears throat> Not for Recently? a few years. Okay. I have been there as a member of the delegation. Oh. <laughs> Good, I'm glad you mentioned that. Added that in. Yeah. Did, did you talk with Denny? Because I thought that he inspected the jail. He, I did too. But he didn't write it. He didn't write it. Out. So it has to be re has got to go to the Attorney General's office. Okay. Anything else? On that is it. Updates. Public input. The rain must have scared away all the public input, right? No. Oh. He's riding a motorcycle. He's sitting there waiting for it to stop. You didn't know it was raining this morning? Yeah, he didn't, he didn't care. He but loved you came it anyway. Yes. Yeah. It's a challenge. You didn't ride your bike, really, did you? He did. It's called devotion. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Uh, Determination. Okay. <laughs> That's exactly right. All Good right. man, John. Up Kenny, up. Coming events. And the Hampshire Association County offers a meeting on 10, 16, 15. Mm -hmm. That is, that may be and it may not be. Why? But there is a commissioner's council meeting and there's also a membership meeting. And there's also a graduation, the 100th graduation. And also graduation. a graduation. But I believe the, um, it got confusing. I, the, this meeting is going to be held at Merrimack County. Right. Because of the graduation. Uh, well, yeah. But it may be held in the nursing home section because we talked about membership meeting and membership voting. That's everybody, every county employee in the state can vote. It's ridiculous. Janitors can vote. So a county could overload the ballot box by having everybody from that county come and vote and it's a block. Which has happened before. Yeah. We don't have to worry about that from Carroll County. Ridiculous. Anyway, uh, the officers will determine whether we meet or not based on uh, this on the second, which is this Friday. Well, anyways, it, it, it's still going to be the G, uh, the uh, CO graduation. The, the, yeah. So that's an addition to this. Right. Um, and uh, delegation is meeting on the 19th of October. Yeah. Uh, the Wakefield Selectman meeting. And, and and that. We don't have an agenda yet, but I'm assuming that's the DA, DAR report. Uh, the DRA, DRA. Yep, DRA is going to be there. Also, um, they want to meet Chuck. We're going to go over the quarterlies. And yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, and uh, Lisa's going to be there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Wakefield Selectman meeting will be October 30th at 7 p.m. We're all going to be there. I will be there. No, we're all going to be there because that's it. Oh. Chris, you're not going to be there? 28th well, I thought it was the, the 28th. 28th is the day. Either you had the wrong day, because the 28th was the day. That yeah, you that's what I thought. Was shooting us. So hold on. So when You're right. Yeah, the 28th. Okay. Sorry. The 28th. Thank you very you much. You can go on the 30th too if you want. To. 7 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be filming over there. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. At this point, I'll be there. Yep. All and right. That's it. And the conference.
I have regarding um, I'd like the three commissioners to, the other two commissioners to take a look at these and based on the resume who should I vote for come Friday um, this is for the executive director's position um, the officers what happens is the officers recommend one candidate to the full executive committee which is the five we have five members that go to the from each county that go to the meeting and they will be voting on this um, and we get two in-house people um, <coughs> Diane Gill um, and Ron White and those are in-house those two people um, it, what's interesting is that we advertised within house but never advertised outside the house um, that we learned on Monday how yeah, this individual um, how did how did how did uh, the representative find out about it? I don't know. Is, was he a representative? No, you know who I'm talking about. <coughs> oh, can I ask a question? It was on the yeah. it was on the web page. Are Ron, is Ron still superintendent? Yeah. Is he is he going to step down? He's going to be retiring. And what about Diane? Is she still She's with him? Um, I don't know what her situation is. Okay. So whoever gets appointed will be stepping down yeah. from the position. Yeah. Um, I will say that I nominated Diane Gill and um, didn't get a second to my nomination. Understanding now that there was one, two, three, four, four of us there. Um, yeah, I mean, the New Hampshire Association of Counties is really screwed up. In one case, it was advertised at 9 o'clock. So, four of us showed up at 9 o'clock. Two came, two additional came at 10 o'clock because they thought it was at 10 o'clock. The agenda said 10 o'clock. So then we had to go over the whole thing again. What we did at 9 o'clock, we did at 10 o'clock for the other two members. Um, and then we've got some conflicts of interest because of like um, we have the administrator from the nursing home whose fiance will be moving up to take over White's position when he retires. And then we've got the commissioner from from um, Merrimack County. Um, and so they have to excuse themselves. So that brings it down to just three of us. Go ahead. David, this isn't for the executive director. This is for the lobbyist. Can't be. It is. Freedom. I thought no, you no, said no, no. they hired... It's, the, we're the, going to the hire an executive point. director and, and, and a lobbyist. That's right. And we hired the lobbyist as DuPont Group. Are you sure? Yep. And we'll look at this. This is something different. That's the group we hired, the DuPont group. Okay, well, what is this one that you handed me? That was group? in competition with the DuPont group. Oh, okay, so... And there was an individual, and therefore, we felt that that individual got sick or, or vacation, there was no backup. And we preferred to go with a firm. And we've had DuPont group before. They went the lowest bidders. This went out the bid. They went the lowest bidders, but Jim Monahan represented the... the, the uh, New Hampshire Association of Counties years ago and did a real good, job, a really good job before we went into the executive director in-house. Um, and so they're only going to be working part time. Okay, well, well I got that and that was for lobbyists and this one is for the director. That's, that's for the director. Okay. Um, you threw it one of them? 
Oh, they're separate. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought they were separate. We each had our own copy. I didn't realize that. No, I just had one. Copy. Trading. So, so the the idea is that we're going to the vote was that we interview all three on Friday at nine o'clock at Primex, um, and if the officers are not satisfied or cannot decide on one candidate, then we'd be re-advertising again. Now, because this was not advertised, but we've got this gentleman here, Mark, um, I would think that if anyone um, wanted to apply for the job, they could still apply for it. There was no deadline set? There was no deadline no on the web page. No. And if anybody is, then I would think that they would uh, uh, send it to George Malaris. Right away. Huh? Right away. Right away. Um, so that he gets it before Friday. Um, because if that's the case, then that individual, if there's somebody, um, could be interviewed on Friday as well. Kind of, like I say, it's kind of screwed up. I mean, he should have advertised. <coughs> any comments on any of these three people? Well, they all seem to be qualified, but I, you're going to be at the during the, there for the interview process. Yeah. I mean, that certainly is a large chunk of the decision. So, I would My defer opinion. to your. I, I would say I would defer to your best judgment. Judgment after talking to them. I mean, you're going to glean a lot more from that process than you can looking at those. Okay. I mean, that's. Okay. I mean, we're not. They all seem to be qualified, <laughs> you know. Some may be more qualified than others, but getting a sense of who's the most committed is... The question that came up uh, after I made the motion was that they thought Diane Gill was not, more, uh, not as aggressive as the person they would like to have. Mm -hmm. but, Ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, I agree with Chris. I, I only know one of the three candidates, and you're going to garner a lot more information about him sitting there in an interview than for the two that we don't know. Okay. And I don't believe Chris knows any of the three. Well, yeah, that's right. yeah, a chance yeah. to meet him. But, well, let me well, ask the, this question. One, the one the gentleman you mentioned about being the... I did recognize the name of the gentleman you mentioned about being the lobbyist. And I saw him when I was in Concord, and he mm -hmm. was very good. Um, the group that we hired to be the lobbyist, Dupont group. Uh, no, the, the, name, the the name of the person that you were. Jim Monahan. Jim Monahan. I recognize that name. Yeah, yeah he he's been a lobbyist with the Dupont years. group. Yeah. Um, let me ask you this question then: um, Would you suggest that I make a point that we should go out? Um, and re-advertise so yes. that somebody else within the state might be interested in being an executive director? Frankly, David, for the sophisticated organization this is supposed to be, and they want an executive director, I'm flabbergasted that they didn't go out. I don't know, too. I can't believe they didn't Me too. Me too. Or go out into public. And then, and then to put it up there and not have any closing date so nobody knows when to get that information in, yep. doesn't make sense. Doesn't appear to be a well run organization. Well, it's also interesting why this individual outside heard about it and applied. Well, and Pete's are busting around. Yeah, yeah. The representative heard somebody talking about yeah. it. And we'll it okay. All right. So your, your thoughts was that we should go out. Yeah. Okay. That's mine. <coughs> and can, yes. we, can we have a board? Excuse me, Ken. Can we, can we give you some direction? Now, what's Chris's feeling? I, well, I agree. I mean, certainly this type of position, which should not be something that is, you know, such that you have to know somebody to know what's going on. Right. <laughs> you know? Exactly. <laughs> you know, that doesn't sound doesn't like sound transparency to me. And, and if, if one of the 
ex-county employees becomes that, do they focus more on the county that they came from? Well, that's the, as yeah. opposed to the other nine counties that are out there. Not only the county they come from, but the uh, the affiliate where they come worked. From. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was my question. I rather have someone outside. That's right. So, so I think you should go with the message. At least a two to one vote. We don't know how you feel, but it would be right. nice if, if the three of us agreed that they should go out again. Okay, I'll put it out to bid. Yeah, it sounds like it's a good old boy. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's the way it sounds like. I mean, at least through some. Yeah. Okay. There's a number of free ways to advertise mm -hmm. that position through the networking with the state, the state house, the county. The reason I voted for Diane Gill was because she has gone to hearings and has testified along with George. Um, with the state legislature. Um, so that's why I felt that she was more qualified than the other two, but I don't know this guy Mark either. So <coughs> okay, I get your feelings. We'll see what we can do on Friday. All right, let's move on to uh you want to do the uh, uh non public minutes? You have oh, those? No, I don't, I don't have them. Are they all the same or is that Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess that's an easy one. Session one was canceled. That's a tough one. All right. You want to sign it? Sure. Well, that's session two. You can write it down. So this one is session two? That's session two. of session 2, September 23rd, 2015, sealed. Second. All those in motion say aye. 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 motion that, well, I got a, a technical point here. If, if I was the one that made the motion in the non-public meeting, can I again then be the person to make the motion to keep them sealed? Why not? I'll let you assume so there's no technical the conflict. That we, you make the motion. Yeah, on Chris seconded it. And then we can non public session three that we seal those minutes. We're sealing them, but we got to approve them before the day's out here. Yeah. Motion's been made that we seal, you seconded it, right? Mm -hmm. um, non public session three. All those in support of the motion say aye. 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 And I'll make the motion that we approve all, all three sessions. Well, wait a minute. Let's, let's get through with. Um, the last one here. Oh, we haven't done another one? We got another one. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait. David needs to sign that one. What's that? 
I guess I could have signed it and then handed it back, but we're creatures of habit. Yeah. Session four. So all the hours of motion to approve the minutes, right? A motion that we approve uh, the non public minutes session four of September 23rd. Uh, sign it or sign it. Oh, second. All those in support of motion say aye. 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 So, uh, How can I make my motion? Yeah. I make a motion that we approve all, uh, uh, all four sessions of September 23rd. On public minutes. Second. Any further discussion? All those in support of motion say aye. 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 So voted we'll then. Alright. I'll make a motion that we go into non public session on the RSA 91A.3, paragraph 2, parentheses A. Uh, is it a requirement of the law that you have to read the whole thing? Or? I know I we've think all you need done to, that. I think you need to um, at least identify okay, well, I'll read what that RSA is. is. The dismissal, promotion, or compensation of any public employee or the disciplining of such employee or the investigating of any charges against him should be in her unless the employee affected one has the right to to a meeting and to request the meeting be <coughs> open, in which case the request shall be granted. Are you also including session two? Um, let me see what session two is. Yes. I will also include in my motion that we uh, go in on public session for session two under RSA 91-A period three, paragraph two, parentheses C. Matters which, if discussed in public, would likely affect adversely the reputation of any person other than a member of the body or agency itself, unless such person requests an open meeting. Motion has been made. Do I hear a second? Second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Mr. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Mr. Yes. We are now in public, uh, non-public, for session one, and we'll carry on into session two. Um, I don't feel there's any other business that will be coming before, before the board. I don't think so. Um, so we will uh, adjourn after we take action on session two. Can we take a five?